Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, and I'm a professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. In this video, um, I'm going to do an example from differential calculus. It's, uh, one of the very first examples that you'll see in a differential calculus course, finding a one-sided limit uh, or evaluating uh, a, a one-sided limit problem without using limit laws. So this comes before you know what the limit laws are. And what that essentially means by without limit laws is that you have to focus on the interior of the limit, you know, what you're taking the limit of, and you'll have to do some type of manipulations on that without moving the limit or without breaking this into like a, um, a quotient of limits or the sum of limits on the inside or anything like that. You can't move, you can't break this apart. You have to work with just the, the highlighted region and then make some logical statements about what this limit turns into. So let's go ahead and start this. I'll first start by easily telling that, listen, when you're given a fraction, especially in calculus, uh, a fraction of functions, that you make sure that you uh, factor as much as possible. Do any type of algebraic manipulation. I shouldn't, Maybe I shouldn't write that there. I'll write it down here. This equals the limit as x approaches 2 from uh, below, from the left-hand side, of, uh, I will factor out an x out of that numerator, so it's just a simple little x times x minus 2, and the denominator, I'm really crossing my fingers and hope I get an x minus 2, and it turns out that I do. I have an x minus 2 times an x minus 2. And uh, that is what the interior of our limit is. And now that I see that I have like factors, I'll go ahead and divide both numerator and denominator by those. Normally people would say cancel because that's really technically what most students learn is that that's called canceling. But in reality, you're actually dividing numerator and denominator by X minus two. Not a big deal. I'm just stating that. So we're left with a limit as X approaches two from the left, or as I say from below, of uh, x over x minus 2. Now, at, in this situation, I'm still going to see what happens. I'm going to try to imagine what happens here as x gets really close to 2, but from below 2. As x gets really close to 2, I should use a different color pen here. Blue is fine. As x gets really close to 2, that numerator gets really close to 2, right? That denominator... I'm not really splitting the limit. I'm investigating the limit, right? That denominator actually, think about something, a number really close to two, but below two, like 1.99 or something like that. If you think about that, 1.99 minus two, that's really close to zero, but it's negative. It's zero from the negative side of zero, right? It's a negative point zero, 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 one or something like that. So you're very, very close to zero, but you're on the negative side of zero. Now, as you should already know, any finite number divided by a very small number, and in fact, I'll write this off to the side, I'll say uh, finite, because that's what our numerator is heading towards, divided by extremely small, I'll write that out, tends to be a very large, 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 in fact, extremely large number. And the fact is that denominator is not just getting extremely small, it's getting, it's becoming infinitesimally small. So therefore, that number is not just getting extremely large, it's getting infinitely large. Thus, this whole fraction is heading off to infinity. What you're going to do here is you're going to look at the signs of the numerator and denominator. The sign of the, the, sign of the numerator is positive because it's heading to positive 2. The sign of the denominator is actually negative because it's heading towards zero from the left, from below zero. So if you look at that fraction, positive over negative, that's negative, and we're heading towards an infinitely large number. So that's heading towards negative and then infinity. There we go. That's all you do with a problem like this. And it's very important to remember that uh, this idea that uh, a finite number on top over an extremely small denominator is going to be an extremely large number. That's that's one of the major concepts in calculus. Okay. Yeah.